Well, good morning and greetings to you from Warm Springs Indian Reservation in Central Oregon. I'm on the Deschutes River, which flows north up to Columbia River. Uh, this is Tim Patterson, it's Trade Show Guy, and it's time for Monday morning coffee for May 21st, 2018. All right, so this will be a little different, uh, this particular show today. I have no guest. Uh, but I've got a well, I guess I kind of have a guest, but no interview um, Although I have asked questions of people. So yeah, you'll just have to follow along It's kind of a short film of what I've done this last three or four days uh, out here at a secret place somewhere On the Deschutes River. All right, so uh, We'll jump in here in a second. Uh, I do have later in the show uh, a little uh, explanation of my self-employment business, the Trade Show Guy Exhibits. I've also, um, I think I'm going to have a Trade Show Tip of the Week. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but we'll stop somewhere along the way and add that in as well. So it's kind of an on-the-road version of uh, Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee for May 21st. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, if you answer it on video, I'll put it on my podcast. Oh. <clears throat> and if you don't have a good answer, that's voice. fine, too. So, uh, the question is, what is the secret to life as you see it? Never overextending yourself. What's the question? Uh, what is the secret of life as far as you know? <laughs> oh, boy. The pursuit of happiness. You can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's not the one that I recall him oh. in rehearsal. <laughs> he, he rehearsed something completely different, didn't he? <laughs> Do you remember what you said in the rehearsal? Oh, you want that one as well? Well, well love mankind. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not as necessary. Fine. Uh, uh, no regrets, no worries. Don't look back on bad things like in a negative light necessarily, and don't fret about that hasn't happened yet. What's your secret to life? <laughs> Mine's getting up in the morning. <laughs> secret to life? Your secret to life. What makes life work for you? Ah, see, that's different. It is different, yeah. but... Uh, what makes life work for me? Yeah. Uh, oof. Ooh, it's going into the deep thought here. Yeah. Fart jokes? I'm yeah. thinking that might... I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Beethoven. So my, my question to you is, what is your secret to life? I'm going to go with David Lee Roth on this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't sweat the petty and don't pet the sweaty doesn't remember yeah, anything of course not. Doing so far uh, but the result of that is that there's about an hour and ten minutes worth until some other poor slob comes up here and embarrasses them but um, until then here's what I thought would be marginally entertaining back in 2014 can you remember that far back kids uh, it was uh, Larry senior and myself right here on KFOT and I know you guys aren't going to believe this, but we were kind of intoxicated. 
See, we play games here, lots of people here, 30 people, maybe 35. We got a frisbee and beer bottle and ski pole game that I don't know the name of, but it's very competitive. Hey, so what's the name of this game? Ho Ho. -ho. Ho Ho? Yeah. How do you score? So you score by either, so you gotta hit the pole. You throw a frisbee and try to hit the pole. Okay. And, and the goal is to try to knock the bottle off the other side. Got it. So do you score a point when you knock the bottle off? Yeah, well, the, the, you can also score a point by throwing it inside the, the, the like the zone of play. So this league's been going on for what, 35 years now? It's been a long Probably time. A long time, yeah. yeah, yeah. Walking the road just under a mile from the camp. at the world famous headquarters of Friends of Trout. It's about 10 a.m. Yesterday there wasn't a cloud in the sky, today it's totally overcast. It's on the Warm Springs Indian Reservation. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> this is a uh, very similar to Devil's Post Piles down uh, by Mammoth in California. Got these uh, long rock formations. I remember going to Devil's Post Pile to meet my parents who were hiking. This has been the late 80s. Uh, they were hiking the Pacific Crest Trail System after they retired. Took them two summers to do it. They probably did 95% of it over time. Um, but that's I met them. I went down to pick up a friend in San Francisco and we drove over to Devil's Post Pile and met them and had lunch and camped out for a night. This reminds me of that. I was just pondering the, uh, the job that I have, which is being self-employed as owner of Trade Show Guy Exhibits. I've done this for seven years this July. I did it for nine years working for someone else as a VP of sales and marketing, which um, I always found interesting because I was never trained in either sales or marketing. Um, but I spent 26 years in radio, and there's certainly a lot of marketing as being a uh, member of the team there. And I was interested in it always, and I was always interested in sales. I would read books about them. I would listen to sales training tapes, and I really don't know why. Maybe it was somehow preparing me for my post-radio life, although, you know, when you're 35 or 40 and you've been doing radio for 15 or 20 years since you were a teenager seeing thinking there might be a post Radio life is kind of absurd because that's what you do. That's what you know. That's what you love but uh, radio changed and I ended up in this industry um, Where the the job is essentially sales skills and project management skills, so it's people skills and when I sat down to interview with Ed Austin at interpretive exhibits in 2002 um, he had no intention of offering me a job. He just was curious about me because we'd known each other a little bit and he had a job opening. After the hour conversation, he said, well, you, you've got good people skills and we can teach you the rest, so would you like the job? And he basically offered to double my salary what I was doing then, which was uh, not being in radio, but trying to be an assistant manager at a Hollywood video. Yeah, a lot of future in that one, right? So I jumped at the chance. He threw me a rope and I grabbed it. Like the old uh, Foo Fighters song, give me some rope, I'm coming loose. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so that's what it took, and I struggled a lot, uh, badly, but he paid me well, and I slowly learned stuff. Using my radio skills, I would call up people in the industry and interview them about what they knew. And so I compiled a pretty good knowledge about the industry from these so-called consultants and experts and I, they were very knowledgeable and that they were willing to talk to me on the record and have me post those interviews on our company website I thought that was pretty cool so I got to do that and learned a lot and one thing led to another and Ed retired closed the company I had clients that said hey we need to do some stuff and I took another leap someone threw me a rope and I grabbed it give me some rope I'm coming loose 
I guess resiliency is what life is all about. If I were to answer that question that I've been asking people up here at Trout, would that be be resilient? Resiliency can get you through a lot. I used to be a member of a Toastmasters club that was a closed club in a sense, but I got invited in because I had a friend that worked at State Farm. Everybody else there was a member of State Farm, and so many of them were career members. They'd been there, you know, for 20, 30 years. And I lost my job in the middle of my time with that uh, Toastmasters club. Basically thrown out on my ear, radio job. And they were like, I could never deal with that. I wouldn't know what to do. And I thought, I can always get a job in radio. It may not be the best, but I can do it. I'm crossing a, a, a crossing. <laughs> there, see? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think resiliency is probably the key to the answer. What is the secret to life? Being resilient. All right. And enjoying the passage of time. That's, that's one for Ed. Thought I'd take a moment and show you where I'm driving. It's my travel log for the Trade Show Guy Monday morning copy. So um, I'm in Central Oregon, just north of a little town called Madras, population a few thousand, maybe 6,000. So if you look down this road, I just picked a side road, uh, there is a mountain there that is uh, Three Finger Jack. And over there is a place called, a mountain called Mount Washington. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up exactly between half of those, uh, half, <laughs> halfway. They're seven miles apart and three and a half miles uh, in the middle of them, there is a place called Santa Am Lodge, which is where I grew up, top of Santa Am Pass. You look over here, you got the three sisters, uh, north, middle, and south. And then to the left of that is, I believe that's Broken Top. Mount Bachelor is tucked back away in there. You can't see Mount Bachelor from uh, this particular angle, but uh, that's where I'm tra traveling. That's where I'm driving. I'm just kind of heading heading around the big loop which goes from Portland up over the Mount Hood Highway government camp uh, south to Warm Springs, Redmond, Sisters, Bend is over there and then back and over Santa Ann Pass which takes us back over that away back to Salem. Oh by the way uh, Black Butte is the one that's uh, kind of right, right there. Uh, that's a nice hike it's a good day hike up and back. All right, here at, uh, I <laughs> I'd actually didn't intend to come in here to Smith Rock State Parks, but I have a, a free pass to get in because I have an Oregon State Parks pass that's good for a year. Um, but this is gorgeous. It's uh, There's hundreds and hundreds of people here. There's hundreds of cars parked. It's very popular. I'm parked in a 15 minute spot because I'm not gonna wander around and hike and everything, but there are virtually dozens and dozens and dozens of hikers up there. In fact, if you look across, I'm looking, they look like ants over there. But if you zoom in on them, you can actually see there's people hiking up this very steep trail, which goes to the very top. Uh, I'm not sure where they do the mountain or the rock climbing, but I'm sure that there's a place to do that around here. I saw a lot of uh, folks with their uh, rock climbing tools at the end of their cars as they're sorting through all that stuff. Over here is an eagle nest viewing area. People with dogs and telescopic cameras and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, Smith Rock State Parks, this is part of the little travelogue you get as a bonus because I'm on the road for this week's trade show guy Monday morning coffee. So, little canyon area down here, the rocks across. It's pretty nice. Busy but nice. You wouldn't want to be here in July and August uh, in the sunny day because it'd be pretty hot. But today's a nice day for hiking. It's cool. It's probably in the low to mid 60s. So you can even get a weather report with me here. So, but that's my old radio training. I always have to drop that in. So, I think we're rolling. All right. Uh, another little uh, <clears throat> unexpected or unplanned or whatever travel stop on our little travelogue here on the uh, Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. This building is very old. Uh, it's currently the Sisters Public Schools Administration. I went to school in Sisters in the 60s and there was a school over there, elementary school, that I went to. That's a new one there. That's not the one I went to. I remember one of the things they taught us how to do was 
dial a telephone. <laughs> Uh, this, when I was here, uh, before I was here, this was a high school. This one little building here was the high school in Sisters. Uh, when I was here, it was administration, and I was sent to the principal's office at least twice, as I recall. I don't remember the reasons, but uh, over here, which is currently City Hall, this used to be a uh, middle school. They tore this down about, uh, the middle school down, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. And, it's just, yeah raised it. I drove through once and had fences around it and it was half destroyed. I probably have pictures of it somewhere. But yeah, this is where I learned all sorts of fun stuff about life and everything. Basketball. Played a lot of basketball. Did a lot of sports. I was really good in school. My mom told me later, you really like school. And I went, really? <laughs> she said, yeah. I always got good grades here. Um, way back over there, I don't think it's there anymore, but there was a Little League field. I played Little League there, and believe it or not, our uh, coach was uh, the sheriff uh, of Sisters, Oregon, and his name was Moon Mullins. But anyway, I'm just kind of reliving a few things here. Uh, another stop on our fun little travelogue. You know, Sisters is always a hopping place. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Uh, spring and summer are probably the busiest. We got a big rodeo here around the 4th of July. Traffic's That's... always stacked up end to end, both directions. Single lane road, I should say double lane road. One road, one lane going each way. And then of course all the trucks come through and everything too. So it's uh, pretty nutty here. If you don't like traffic, it can be frustrating. Although it is a, a fun city, town, not really a city. I have a few restaurants. I mean, it's not very big, right? That's about it. Uh, when I was growing up here, the population was 900. I think now it's about 2,000. So not a big place, but a big tourist stop. So this is Sisters, Oregon, over in Central Oregon. Hey, well, that wraps it up for this sort of travelogue, camping, partying edition of the Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee for... Um, Gosh, the, the 21st of May already, just uh, 10 days left in the month. Memorial Day weekend dead ahead. Hope you have a great weekend for that. I'll catch you next week. I do want to leave you with my trade show tip of the week, though. That has to do with uh, email marketing. Let's focus on pre-show email marketing. Let's, let's set this plan. So imagine you're 20 to 22 weeks out from your upcoming show. Big show you guys are going to do. You know a lot of your uh, clients and prospects are going to be there and you've got a lot of them on an email list. So let's figure out how to reach out to them. So first email should be, don't forget, join us at booth number blankety blankety blank. Times are, so it's basically the first one is basic information. Second one, you, you add something in, you mentioned the basic information, you add something in to say, by the way, and you know, tease a product or a service or something you're gonna release, we're gonna be having a new blankety blank at the uh, coming show. Third email, just a couple weeks later, will be the same thing. Don't forget, we're releasing something, and if you have a special guest or something, a sample you're going to give, make sure you mention that as well. Fourth email, if you've got a premium gift to give to people that show up or schedule a meeting, give it to them there, okay? So point that out in the fourth email. All the same stuff that you had before. We're going to do this, such and dust, such a date, new products. Uh, fifth email will be another reminder. Don't forget where it's a countdown now. So the fifth, sixth, and seventh are all countdowns and reminding uh, people of what you said in the past. You may want to add one more thing in there that they haven't seen before, but the last three and your, the last one's like a week or less before the actual show. So that is my trade show tip of the week. You set up an email marketing stri uh, string of emails from like uh, 20 weeks out, about every two weeks. And then as you get closer, you tighten them up a little bit so that they're coming at you, uh, coming at the potential uh, clients or the prospects or your clients uh, every week or so. Maybe in the last um, you know week or two, don't forget, just do this every other day. Don't forget, we'll be there and remind them why you want them there. Make a call to action, come by our booth, booth number, all that stuff. So have yourself, that's it, have yourself. Oh, wait a minute, wait, I forgot, hang on, hang on. Uh, this is Saddle Lake, by the way. Um, beautiful place. It's seven miles from where I grew up. So I was here a lot, but there's a lake up over the hill 
a little lake about one tenth the size of this, if that. It's a little swimming hole, and that's where I learned to swim, Scout Lake. Uh, so this is kind of my home. This is this is my old stomping grounds from when I was a kid. So the one good thing, it could be kind of grouped under this umbrella here. The one good thing for the week would be going back home, reliving old memories, camping out, good friends, vacation, unplugging from the grid. I think that was the best part. Was totally unplugging from the grid for like 72 hours. Awesome.